Hey peeps, we are live. Hello from San Francisco, California. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And today it is hot. 88 degrees right now. Right now. But it was at, up to 90, what was it? It was 95 at the high point right around noon today. And for San Francisco, that is extremely hot because in this Oceanside situation that we live in here, most people don't have air conditioning because it rarely ever gets it's over 75. Yeah, fog. It's a natural <laughs> air conditioner. So anyway, so today we are super hot here. It is like almost 90 here in the kitchen. So fortunately, uh, we don't really have to turn on the big oven or work over the hot stove. We're going to be using the waffle iron today. Which is hot enough. It's plenty hot <laughs> enough, but we'll keep it going. So I want to say hello to those of you who have joined us in the chat room. Nate, Mr. Blue. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. And Terry from Madwood Barbecue is in the house. Hello, Terry. And I see Jess Hilbert and Ralph Jenkins are here, both of our good friends. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's always great to have you guys here in the chat with us. So what are we making today? Croffles. Croffles. So tell us what a croffle is. It's a croissant made in a waffle iron. Okay, so it's basically if a croissant and a waffle iron had a baby, it would be a croffle. Yeah. Okay. And what do we have here on this beautiful green plate? What are, what, this is croissant dough. These Tell are, us about this it. This is store bought croissant dough. There, uh, I'll show you. We do have the package right here. This is uh, from, from Pasquier. Pasquier. It's a French family bakery. Well, these are from the frozen section at the grocery store. Tilt it just a little bit. So, other way that oh. away from the light okay. there now everyone can see it up a little bit better okay there anyway. we go so frozen croissant dough it comes eight to a package <clears throat> do we know how much this dough cost at the store oh yeah it was um basically eight bucks eight bucks so it's a dollar per frozen yeah. croissant and these are mini croissants and i think these are really cool now we did do a test with these and you baked them according to the package directions yeah. tell us about how that turned out oh, well, they came out like croissant uh, and they were yummy. They were, you know, crispy outside, doughy on the inside. Yeah, there's a little chew to it because this is croissant dough, so it is supposed to have a little bit of a chew to it. Let's go back to the chat really quick so I can welcome the guests that have joined us since just a few minutes ago. I see Hobo Nickel Barbecue is in the house. Hi, Hobo. Great to see you. And our good friend Sunset has joined us Yay! all the way from New York. Great to see you here. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Okay, so for those of you who missed it, we have the windows open because we don't have air conditioning and it's 88 degrees outside and it's also about 88 here in the kitchen. So we're wearing light t-shirts today. We have a fan going and you may from time to time hear some traffic noise because we have the windows open because we're trying to keep this environment as cool as we can so we can make this cooking view uh, video unfold. Okay, so now we explain that we've got the croissant dough and to make the croffles, this is to make a croffle itself. This is all you need. Yeah. And then well, what, and, um, some cooking spray. Some cooking spray. Okay. And we're using vegetable oil cooking spray to coat the waffle iron. These do produce a lot of butter as they cook. Yeah. So once you do one batch, then you really don't need to re-grease the waffle iron a second time. But the first time, you definitely want to start out with it being greased. So let's say hello to Trish from Cooking with Trish. Hey, great to see you today. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Okay, so Trish, we're making, we're going to make croffles today, and croffles are when you cook croissant dough in a waffle iron. And we have the green light. Okay, the green light is on the waffler, so we are ready to get started. Good to go here. Okay, so the first thing that Philip is going to do is to lightly coat the waffle iron with some cooking spray on both the top plate and the bottom plate, and hopefully the cooking spray doesn't waft over to the camera. Okay, and now you're gonna just lay out. Lay out one per square here. This, as you can see, this waffler is divided into four equal rectangular sections, and Philip's gonna put one mini croissant in each section. Now I've got our little uh, Smart Tro digital digital timer here, and I'm going to set this for eight minutes, and push the start button. There we go. Okay, and that's all that it takes. So we've got eight minutes set on our timer and the croissants are tucked away in the waffle iron and they're just going to do their thing for the next eight minutes and as soon as this beeps philip will pop those babies out in the meantime i'm going to set these aside okay. and while the croffles are cooking in the waffle iron we're going to show you a really fun mocktail 
So next we're going to get out some glasses and we're going to need some seltzers. Okay, so the ingredients for this mocktail are listed right below where you're watching this live stream in the description. And I will also run by these as we show you how to make this. We're also going to need some whipped cream in a can. So let me show you what we've got. We've got seltzer water, whipped cream in a can, orange tarani, and vanilla tarani. And we also have some sprinkles. We're going to use the orange ones today since we're starting to get into meteorological autumn now. We're sort of shifting to orange, yellows, browns, rust oh, color schemes. Drink. And it's going to be an orange drink. So let's pop these it's out of here. Nice, right? Can I ask you to do yeah. that for me? Philip is going to fill these. We're just using fountain glasses. You can serve this in any kind of a glass that you want. And Philip's going to fill those up all the way to the top with ice cubes. So let me check in with the chat really quick and say hello to Daniel from Second Chance Love. Hello, Daniel. Happy Tuesday to you too as well. We are having a hard time staying cool, Daniel, as I'm sure you are because Daniel is also uh, here in California, though he's in Southern California, but the entire state right now is going through a really massive heat wave. It is so hot in Brentwood right now that the construction workers at the development where they're building our house had to stop working early this morning because it was already 102 by the time it was 11. Okay, so Philip has filled up the fountain glasses for us with ice cubes. And the next thing we're going to do is measure out our Chirani. Actually, the next thing we're going to do is fill these up with some seltzer. Mm. So I'm just going to top these off. And I'm not going to fill these all the way to the top because we're going to be adding some Chirani. So we're just going to go close to the top. You can smell the butter. Yes, we can smell the croissants cooking in the waffle iron mm. now. So the next thing I'm going to do for these mocktails, this is basically an orange vanilla cream. It kind of tastes like a, what'd you say? An orange orange Julius. Julius. Okay, so I'm going to put one ounce, that would be half a shot of the orange Girani in each glass. Just like that. That looks so festive with that beautiful mm. orange color. Okay, so then I'm going to add also a half a shot of the vanilla Girani. Yeah. Now, this smaller bottle of Tarani has a cool pour spout that was built in. Love that about it. Okay, so half a shot of the vanilla Tarani. Now, how easy was that? Okay, supremely easy. Now, the next thing that we need to do just really quick, we're just going to give it a very, very gentle stir. Because sometimes the Tarani, because it's heavier than the salsa, tends to sink all the way to the bottom. So we're just going to give that a little gentle stir. You can see it down there. That's okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, so there, so far, so good. Now, the next thing we need to do is add our whipped cream. And this is actually real cream. It's not the uh, oil, whipped oil. It's actually real cream. And I'm just going to go and top off and try to make these look as pretty as possible. There we go. Oh, it's coming out very easy today because it's so warm out. Okay, so I want to get this right back into the refrigerator. Oh boy. And yes, I licked my fingers. Okay, so now I'm going to just open this. Sprinkle. We have these sprinkles oh, and this cool now. little, yes, you can call them sprinkles or dimmies. You can see there's several colors in here. So I'm opening this segment that is orange and I'm just going to sprinkle a few of these out over the top of our drinks for a little festive touch. Oops, there we they go. Yeah, they're, they're a little... I mean, things the are the heat is sticky. making the sugar get kind of melty. Yeah. So, and then you prefer to have straight a straight straw, and I prefer to have a bent straw. So, there you have it. There's our orange vanilla cream mocktail topped with whipped cream. These look so festive. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Mm. Oh my gosh, these are so good. It really does taste like an orange Julius, doesn't it? It's got that vanilla creaminess to it and this lovely bite from the That's citrus the of the orange. Creamy. And then you can also stir the whipped cream into it and really get some cream action going on. These are yummy. Okay, so I see that Bobby Joe Ski Girly has joined us in the house. Mm. Hello, great to see you all the way from the East Coast. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thank mm. you for coming to hang out with us today. So we are kind of sweaty here in the kitchen today because the temperature topped out in San Francisco mm. earlier this afternoon at 95 degrees, 
which for us is supremely hot. And of course, being in an ocean, ocean side uh, situation, we don't have any air conditioning. Fortunately, we're going to have air conditioning at our new house in Brentwood because today it is 112 <laughs> in Brentwood. That it's like it's just as hot as Palm Springs. So, okay, so right now what we've got going on, we just finished making these lovely vanilla orange cream mocktails. And the croissanto is in the waffle iron because we're making mini cropples today. Now, why are they mini cropples instead of full-size cropples? Well, that's what I can find in the store. That's the kind of croissanto you can get uh, retail. Um, the, there, are the, there are specialties that were to sell full-size frozen croissanto. You, you could, say, but... It doesn't get it for your bakery. It would be a whole different process than what we're doing because we've planned this out based on how long these mini ones take to cook, which if you miss that... We have the waffle iron set to 350 degrees, and we're cooking the croffles for eight minutes exactly. So this timer, our little smart trobe, How are we doing? will go off. We've got 90 seconds left, okay. so a minute and a half left to go. And then Philip's going to carefully remove the hot croffles from the waffle iron. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to move this aside. And then we'll show you what the croffles look like. This can go back in the fridge until we're ready to make another drink. Okay. And then we can top these off if you need more. Then, All right. So we're getting pretty close. Let's see how long have we got to go here. Just under a minute. And it will be time for the croffles to come out. Let me see. I want to tidy up this one little bit right here. We spilled some Tarani right here. Well, I did. There we go. The ants love Toronto. The ants love Toronto, so we have to make sure we keep it cleaned up. Okay. Hey, I see Stephanie from Ginger Snap Kitchen is in the house. Great to see you. Her newest video is a Thai beef salad. And Stephanie, it looked absolutely delicious. So, so good. And she included a picture of her husband's cat Spanky in the video. And Spanky is a really <laughs> cute little cat. And not only that, but... Sometimes in Ginger Snap videos, at the end of the video, there's a teeny tiny little baby doll that she hides in the food. Well, oh. it's not really hidden because you can see it, but it's really cool. Today, the little tiny bitty baby was in a bowl of cherry tomatoes that was in the beauty shop next to the picture of the salad. Really good work, Stephanie. Okay, this is our timer. It's time to pull the croissants. Okay out of the waffle iron. So we're going to be really careful with this because the waffle iron gets hot on the outside as well as on the inside. So Philip's removing the croffles and laying them out on a napkin on top of a plate. We're using Fiesta plates, of course, today. Because they're really buttery. Yes, these are really buttery, so you need something to soak up the extra butter. Oh, they smell good. So, oh my gosh, these look good. Let's hold these up so everyone can see them. Okay, so those are our croffles. Now, you saw how easy that was, and it only took eight minutes. Now, what happens is, though, because the croissant dough is so supremely buttery, that there's going to be a lot of butter left behind in the waffle iron. And so we don't wind up with blackened butter. You need to do a little... Zap it up. Uh, yeah, we need to, to basically sop up some of this excess butter. And so Philip's just using paper towels to do that. And you want to be really careful when you do this because this waffle iron is 350 degrees and it's mighty hot. So we're just going to sop up some of the excess butter from this first batch. And then we're going to close the lid and we're just going to leave it sit for a minute. And we'll come back and do a second batch before this live stream ends. Okay, let me check in with the chat really quick. I see that Karen has joined us from In the Kitchen with Karen. Hey, Karen, great to see you. So it's, she is boiling. Now, Karen lives in Brentwood, and it, according to our thermometer here, Karen, it says it's 112. So I'm not sure on your backyard uh, thermometer how hot it says it is. Karen's newest video, in case you have missed it, it came out earlier today, she made coffee crinkle cookies, Ooh. and she made them from scratch. And they were the crinkliest crinkle cookies I think I've ever seen. And then she made coffee glaze using coffee and well, I'm not going to tell you what she did. You're going to have to go watch and find out. Anyway, the coffee glaze, she drizzled over the cookies. They looked so good. Karen, those cookies looked really, really beautiful. They belonged on a platter at a cookie party. I, th I think they're great. So be sure and check out Karen's new video where she makes coffee crinkle cookies. They looked really lovely. Okay, so Philip has dabbed out all the excess butter 
from the waffle iron. And we're going to close the lid on the waffle iron for now so it stays hot. And we'll do a second batch of these croffles, like I said, before this live stream is over. So if you missed how to do this at the beginning of the video, we will show you one more time. Okay, so now we're drinking our orange cream. It's actually orange vanilla cream. If you missed this, we just used seltzer water and added equal parts of Tarani orange and Tarani vanilla and topped it off with some whipped cream and some orange sprinkles. Mmm. This is so good. It's like pinky up drink. These are yummy. And as you saw, it's so, so easy to and do. Cold. Thank you, Jesus. Ralph says everything is better with butter. Yeah. And bacon. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> anyway, yes, these orange drinks are lovely. This was actually your idea for this vanilla orange cream. And now you see how when you stir it in your cream, it gets much more creamy looking. It gets an opaque color to it rather than the translucent color that I have. That looks really good. That's when it really starts to taste like an orange Julius. Mm -hmm. Once you actually mix the cream in. Mm. Karen says bacon and butter are their own food groups. And I think they're at the top of our list of two of the most important food groups as well. Mm. Probably, you know, I have a sweet tooth, so I'd probably have to say sugar is a food group in my house. Well, cookies. Cookies is definitely a food group. Okay, so now we've got these lovely croffles out. What are we going to do with them? We have several choices. Several. Okay. Sweet and savory. Okay. What would you like to do first? Let's do a sweet version okay. first. Okay. So let's get. So we're going to get a plate, and we're going to go for a sweet version. So we're going to need the whipped cream once again. And earlier, Philip sliced and macerated some strawberries in sugar. So this is already ready. So basically, what you're creating is sort of a strawberry shortcake, and we're using the croffle as the shortcake. So let me get these open here. Let's push this aside and push this out just a little further so everyone can see it. These are macerating for a few days. These they look yummy. And a little bit of salt. And we just screw them on here. Oh, those are so nice and red. Some of that juice. Yes. Now we were going to use some mini chocolate chips to garnish this once the whipped cream goes on but it is so hot here today that the bag of mini chocolate chips has melted into a giant blob of chocolate yeah. so we're gonna have to forego that for chips, today. Are out. chips are out but maybe we could throw on some sprinkles because that's what yeah. we've got handy okay so now you've got this lovely macerated strawberries on top of the crawfall and mm. it's time for some whipped cream, whipped cream. are you gonna want to fork this up? Mm. There we go. Well, that's a lot of whipped cream, boo. Like okay, and we're just gonna sprinkle on some sprinkles because I have them handy from having done the drink over earlier. Normally, like I said, we'd put some chocolate chips on here, but the chocolate chips are kind of melty, melty because it's really hot here today. Oh, let me hear. So, what have we got? Oh yeah, this is how hot it is. This Look, is the butter. The butter melted. Can it's we? It's all runny, runny. We can't even take the lid off because it's like a swimming yeah. pool in there. Anyway, that's how hot it is. The butter just completely melted, total liquefied status. Okay, so there you have it. Strawberry shortcake croffle. That's just one of several things you can do with this. Mm -hmm. Shall we have a taste of it? Let's. Go for it. You did all the hard work, so. Ooh, there's such a nice, I don't think they could hear that. There's a really nice crunch, crunch yeah. when you cut through the croffle. Let me have a look. Ooh, those strawberries look good. Okay, so I'm going to take a little taste. I'm going to, I want to get a little bit of everything. Ooh, such a nice crunch. Yes, the croffles are very crunchy on the outside. This looks really good. No, two on the inside. Mm. And buttery, mm. buttery, buttery. Mm. Yummy. These croffles are good. Mm. Really, really good. It tastes just like a croissant, but it's not hollow inside because it's been pressed inside the waffle iron. But you still get that lovely sort of shattery crispiness from the exterior that you'd expect from a croissant. And there's still that sort of chewy bite on the interior. But like I said, it's all compressed together instead of like most croissants, which are often hollow on the interior. 
Oh my gosh. Nom, nom. Really yummy. And as you saw, supremely easy to do. Now, you don't have to do anything with these croffles except eat them. I mean, you could put some butter and syrup on them right when they come out of the waffle iron and have it as a snack or a breakfast treat. Maybe dust it with a little bit of powdered sugar. There's a lot of ways you could go with these as far as making it a, a breakfast item. Or you can make it a dessert item like what Philip just did with this strawberry shortcake. It's kind of breakfast -y. Fruit, cream. I know. Uh -huh. It's so good. So I see. I'm going to check in with the chat really quick and say hello to Stephen and Jacqueline, who have joined us from Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline channel. Always a pleasure to have you here. And Susan from Rhubarb and Cod is in the house. Susan said they're on a vacation right now, so they can't chat, but they wanted to stop by and say hi. Well, we hope you are having a lovely vacation wherever you are. And thanks for coming and hanging out with us today. Philip has been making croffles. And if those of you who joined us late, if you're not familiar with what a croffle is, it's basically we're taking croissant dough and we're cooking it in a waffle iron. In the case of our application today, we call these mini croffles because this is the kind of dough that's available at the grocery stores for mini croffles. And these just come out to this really, I think this is a really perfect little size to use for an appetizer or this made a lovely little dessert. And then we can also take these in a savory direction. They do Which not have going, to be yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take these in a savory direction next. Philip has actually got some sausage gravy that normally we'd serve probably over biscuits, but it's also really, really good to use with a croffle. So let me get this croffle out here. Not hot enough? Not quite. Okay, so Philip's still heating the sausage oh, gravy that he made yesterday. So we're just going to give it a little zap in the microwave oven to get it hot enough to drizzle over the top of this croffle. And that is going to be one of our savory options for how to use these lovely croffles. And if you missed how to cook the croffles, don't fret. We have another batch of four and we'll cook those before this live stream ends so you can see one more time how it's done. It's really easy and it's really fun. And as you can see, these come out really cool. They're really crispy and yummy looking, and they're also yummy when you eat them. They're so delicious. So, Okay, I see everyone's playing nicely in the chat. We so appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. And if you are enjoying this live stream, please consider giving us a thumbs up. The more interactions we have with our viewers, it really helps our channel grow. So if you like what you see, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to our channel and you have not subscribed yet, please consider clicking the subscribe button along with the bell symbol. And then you'll get a notification every time we have a new live stream, which is at least every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And some other times as well. What can I get? It's, just, um, it's hot. Well, I have pot holders and stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, so now Philip has got the sausage gravy heated and he's just going to ladle or spoon that over the croffle and voila there's our savory dish made this yesterday mm. that looks so so good thank you susan this is our new swag uh we debuted this last week we have shirts aprons hats coffee cups shot glasses even boxer shorts so you can check out our our uh, merch uh, store by clicking the link on the main page of our YouTube channel. So Philip's going in right. for the sausage gravy on the okay. croffle. So go for it. Let's. I want to check this out too and have a look at that. Give it a taste. Mm. 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 How is it? I want to taste your sausage gravy. Now sausage gravy is something that we haven't done a video of. We'll have to think okay. about doing that sometime because your sausage gravy is really good. Tell everyone there's... These lovely little red pieces in here, and there's these lovely little, well, they're peas, you can tell because they're green. Oh. What what's the red? The red is just the bell pepper, red bell pepper. And the green is peas, just because I want to add some color. Because you know, gravy and sauce. This is so good. yummy. This is really, really good. It's like having, you know, biscuits and gravy, but it's croffles and gravy. You could also take this in a savory direction, the way this goes, and do, you know, instead of chicken and waffles you do chicken and croffles right these are yummy really super good and your gravy is awesome we're gonna have to share the gravy recipe in the not too distant future because this sausage gravy is really good so yummy mm -hmm. oh my gosh so today we are having croffles and vanilla orange cream mocktails cheers cheers everyone thanks for hanging out with us today mm. oh my gosh those are good 
and so is that. Now, earlier we mentioned, and in fact, uh, if you saw the thumbnail for this live stream, you probably saw that one of the croffles had some red sauce and pepperoni and cheese on the top. That was on our first test. It's basically a pizza croffle, and we were actually going to show you exactly how to do that today, but since it's so hot and we don't have any air conditioning, we we're really reluctant to turn the oven on this is bad and make the kitchen any hotter than it already is. So I will just show you what we would do if we were doing that. What we did was we just added some red sauce to the top. Of course, we heated the red sauce ahead of time a little. Or actually, we didn't. We used it cold, and then we put this back in the oven. So let me tell you about that. And then we also put on some mozzarella. And I need to get in the charcuterie drawer. Pepperoni. OK. So what you do, if you want to turn this into a pizza croffle, I would place these on a baking sheet. We were actually going to do that, but like I said, it's too hot in here to turn the oven on right now. So we would just spoon a little bit of the red sauce over the top of the croffle and then add some sliced mini pepperonis to the top of that and then sprinkle the top of that with some mozzarella cheese. So you've got some classic pizza ingredients and we just put the croffles with the pizza toppings back in the oven for how long did we do it for? Five or 10? Uh, I think it was like seven minutes. It was like seven minutes. Yeah. So we baked the croffles with the pizza toppings at 350 degrees for about seven or eight minutes. Just until the cheese gets bubbling, you know, like any pizza. Yeah, just until you see the cheese bubbling and then you can yeah. call it done because the croffles are already cooked. So all you really need to do is get the sauce warmed up and get the cheese melty melty. And that's how it's done yeah. to make pizza croffles. Mini croffles pizza. They're yummy. 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 What's this croffles for you? Butter, <laughs> butter, butter. Ginger Snap says, I'm happy you didn't turn the oven on. Please don't die. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're sweltering in here, melting, but, but you know, yeah, we're hanging on. It's, it's you know, San Francisco, like most people don't have air conditioning because it rarely gets over 75. So, yeah, that's what usually does it. So, Terry from Madwood says they're having turkey legs and cheesy garlic potatoes for dinner. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Sounds we're great. coming to your house, Terry. <laughs> okay, so that was it for how to put together the pizza croffles. I'm going to put this cheese away before it starts melting. And then we will start another batch of croffles. So those of you who missed the beginning of the show can see how it's done because it's really actually supremely easy. You know how we like easy food that has high impact around here. Okay, let me put this stuff away. All right, cheese in the cheese drawer, pepperoni in the charcuterie drawer. Okay, we've got a couple more croffles to snack on here. I'm gonna have another bite of this one that had the gravy on it. These are so good. Mmm, really yummy. And the exterior of the croffle is so crunchy. Really good. Now tell us what you're doing over here. You're busy fixing yourself another drink. Now, if you missed the drink ingredients, we're using seltzer water over ice and then adding one ounce. We've got about, I'd say, six or eight ounces of seltzer water in here. And we're adding an ounce of orange Tarani and an ounce of vanilla Tarani. And then we're topping the drink with whipped cream and some orange sprinkles because it's an orange drink. That's all it takes to make this lovely drink. It's really super yummy. It tastes kind of like an orange Julius, if you remember that place from shopping malls back in the day. We used to go all the time mm. when I was a kid. Oh. Alton from the Dog Father's Barbecue is in the house. Hey, Alton. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to check us out this afternoon. We sure do appreciate it. We are making croffles, which, in case you don't know, is croissant dough cooked in a waffle iron. And we're going to get started with another batch in the not too distant future. Anyway, this is what the croffles look like when they come out. And you can use them. You can just eat them plain. They're really good by themselves. You can top them with butter and syrup like a waffle. Philip made a strawberry shortcake with one of them. We also use them in place of biscuits with some sausage gravy. And I just finished explaining you can also use them as a base for making mini pizzas with some red sauce, pepperoni, and cheese, or whatever kind of toppings you like on your pizza. These make lovely little tiny pizza appetizers, and they're so yummy. Okay, so now you can see Philip's pretty drink. He has a new drink. This is what it looks like when it's new. This is just an orange vanilla cream seltzer, super easy to put together. 
and all ingredients that come right from the grocery store. I see Suburban Barbecue is in the house. Hey, Jim, great to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, let me make sure I said hello. Uh, I see, uh, now that's, I like Alton. Alton says, hey, chat, we have 14 people here and only seven thumbs up. The math ain't mathin'. Smash <laughs> the thumbs up. Woo, woo, woo. Right on, Alton. We need to have Alton come to all of our videos and promote us. So, hey, and Double ZZ Ranch is back in the house. Great to see you. Double ZZ says bacon on pizza. We were talking about bacon earlier. Yeah, bacon is a really good ingredient. I don't think there's anything I don't want bacon on, personally. So now we're just about halfway through our show today, so it's about time to start another batch of croffles. So Philip's bringing over the dough. Let me show you for, for everyone that missed out at the beginning. This is frozen mini croffle dough. Let me turn this so you can see this better. We just got this in the frozen food section at the grocery store. It's in the same area of the frozen food mm -hmm. section where you find like the frozen waffles and things like that. And there were eight mini croissants in here. This is what the dough looks like once it's thawed out when it comes out of the package. And this is what we're using to turn into the croffles. So all we need to do is place the dough in the waffle iron. Ready to go? Are we going to go for it? Let's now, go for it. when we do an initial batch, do you think we need to spray again? No. Okay. We need, when we did the first batch, we sprayed oh, no. with cooking spray, but there's still... Um, quite a bit of butter from the first batch in here. So I don't think we need to spray these again, but Philip's going to lay these out. They're trying to stick to the yeah, plate. They, They're getting really They got soft. melty, melty, so they yeah. stuck to the plate. Hopefully they won't stick to the waffle iron. Yeah. I mean, it's a butter. And what? Okay, we'll do. Oh, they're doing a cruise. Ooh. Next year in July, they're yeah. going on Carnival Cruise for Mardi Gras out of Port Canaveral in Florida. Ooh. It sounds amazing. Have fun. That sounds awesome. Well, we're a lot of people are invited, including us. <laughs> we'll probably be broke by then because we have to pay for our new house. <laughs> we'll see if we have any money left for a vacation by the time we get done writing the check for that. <laughs> anyway, okay, so as you saw, Philip just plopped the croissant dough right into the waffle iron and placed it down. Now I need to set the timer. There we go. We cook the croissant dough in the waffle iron. The waffle iron is set for 350 degrees and this takes eight minutes for these mini croissants. So we'll let the count timer count down. Okay. Everyone's playing nicely in the chat. Yay. Okay. So great to have all of our friends here today. And it is, in case you're wondering, yes, it is hot. You might hear some traffic from outside because we had to open the windows today to get some air circulation going on. And we also have a fan here down on the floor in the background. Well, actually, you can see it. It's right, right over there. Anyway, we're just trying to keep as cool as we can because here in San Francisco, we don't have air conditioning because it rarely ever gets over 75, unlike today, which by the time it was noon, it was 95. Okay, let's see. Uh, any YouTubers who want to party July 8th, 2023, Carnival Mardi Gras out of Point Canaveral, book it. That's the cruise. It sounds amazing, Alton. So we are definitely going to check out the details of that. I've never actually been on a cruise ship before. Have you been on a cruise ship before? No. It's something that I thought I would actually like because I'm kind of lazy when it comes to traveling. I don't, I don't want to really go on a vacation and have to do work because I might as well just be working. So I like the idea of being on... A ship where everything is right there at your disposal and you don't have to go anywhere for anything. It's like the hotel, it's a really nice hotel and you're moving with it. Yeah, you're floating around with it. I like that idea. <laughs> Barbecue Mike G is in the house. Hey, Barbecue Mike, he's talking about your shirt looks like you lost at paintball. I, this is why when I bought it on it. It was exactly <laughs> like that when it came off the rack. <laughs> okay, so, but, um, oh, Barbecue Mike, just in case you will want to notice, we do have the rainbow cake again. We didn't make another one. It's the same one because it's made out of plaster. Hello. It looks pretty, but it will not taste good. Okay, so now we have the croffles in the waffle iron. We're looking at about uh, not quite six more minutes to go on the cook time for that. So this is pretty actually low maintenance as far as cooking because while they're cooking, as you saw earlier, we just made some drinks. 
you could get your toppings ready for whatever way you want to serve these babies. Mm, and we can start to smell the butter and the dough cooking, mm. and it gets really yummy in here. Fresh croissant. Ralph is asking, when do you move to the new digs in Brentwood? Well, speaking of that. First quarter next year. That's the, but, the yeah. official word from the developers. Really know exactly. Yeah, the first quarter of 2023. So that's like a three-month window. So mostly what the issue is, is actually we were there last week on Friday. If you saw our Instagram, we posted a picture of what the house looks like right now. It's just prior to the stage of when they put the stucco on the outside of the building. And the inside of the building is still all raw and there's unfinished. Frame, but yeah, there's no. Uh... Well, yeah, the whole building's built, but there's no interior. It's just raw studs. It's called built to frame in the stage it's in right now. And the reason that the developer asked us to see it now is so we can check out where all the wires and the plumbing and the plugs and the lights and make sure everything is in the locations that we specified that we want things to be in. And so they took us on a very detailed walkthrough that took about 90 minutes. It was fun. We walked around the outside of the whole building and all through the entire interior of the building and checked everything out. And you're right, it was totally fun. I had a great time. And it was so cool seeing the space, even though there's no sheetrock on the walls yet, you really get a sense of the size of the rooms and the rooms are huge. Yeah. Our bedrooms are big. The living room, dining room and kitchen, the great room area as it were, is about twice as big as the kitchen and living room that we have right now. Right now, my office and bedroom is eight by 10. Yeah, so anyway, um, just I'm sorry, I'm just reading the chat here as it's scrolling by. Uh, Dogfather says, first quarter 20 of 23 party at Mitch and Phillips. Yeah, we will definitely be mm -hmm. having a party of some sort. I'm not sure if it'll be right when we first move in the door because it's gonna take a little while. This It's a big house. And it's going to take a little while for us to get it decorated. And then, of course, the developer is delivering it to us with the landscaping in the front yard already all installed. But the backyard, which is a third of an acre, we're going to have to do all of that ourselves. And that's a pretty big space to work with. So we are going to be very busy. I know it's just dirt. Yeah, they give us nothing but dirt. That's all we get. Front so, by fence. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to have to come up with some ideas. Actually, we do have a lot of ideas. I think we probably have more ideas than we do cash. So we'll see how that goes. We're modeling the whole thing in Legos, too. Yes, Philip has been modeling the building. In fact, some of you who watched our talk show from earlier this year may remember in the beginning stages, you showed off the model a few well, times. Well, that point, it was just the house, and I could hold right. it up. Well, now, now the model is four feet long it's a yard. and two and a half feet wide, and it has the entire I yard. Can't just pick it up. No, it's very heavy, and it's in multiple segments that all snap together. So once the entire thing is done, we're going to make a whole video all about the model itself and we'll tell you all about that once we get closer to doing that but we'll be able to show you the model in all its entirety and philip has designed it in a modular fashion so the backyard that we were talking about that isn't landscaped yet we're experimenting with the lego model of putting things in different places including a swimming pool we'll see how that goes just so you know uh, here in san francisco people rarely have pools because like i said it rarely gets over 75 but in brentwood where today it is 112 uh, a lot of people actually have pool, swimming pool, pools yeah. out there, and we think we're probably going to need one. In the day of so, water. Ralph says they'll bring Fiesta Ware to the party. Ooh. Anyone who brings <laughs> Fiesta Ware is welcome at our party anytime. Yes, we can never have too many dishes. In fact, there's we're going to be doing a live stream unboxing some more things that we ordered just recently. And... Lots of you who have been watching our show are probably saying, hey, you keep saying you're not supposed to be buying stuff because you're moving. Well, but we keep seeing these great things that we just can't live without. So we're just ordering things and then we're taking a peek at them and then we're going to pack them right back up and they'll be new all over again once we get to Brentwood. So I actually can't wait. It's now that we've seen the building. The last time that we were there, it was just a flat cement pad that was the foundation. <laughs> So there wasn't really a whole lot to look at, but this time it was quite different. And some of the uh, houses that are across the street from where we're going to be are already several months ahead of our house. And they're actually ready for the residents to move in. The only hitch in the get along, and this is what is creating the delays. Hey, G &E. The people who aren't from California won't know what that is, but that's the electricity Pacific company. gas and electric. And even though our development relies very little on electricity provided from 
the company because everyone has solar panels. They still are making the developer cool their heels for three months before they'll come and turn the meter on so you can move into your house. Yeah. So that's kind of iffy. That's going to be the thing that takes the, probably the defining factor when we can actually move in. So right. Turn the the developer will be done long before we can yeah. actually move in because we have to wait for the utility to hook up the electricity, which could take weeks or even months. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting close. We're just about coming up on eight minutes. Okay. So the second batch of cruffles oh, will be done. Let's start with the second plate. I'll put these ones we baked earlier aside. Okay, so just once again, for those of you who missed it, we have the waffle iron set to 350, and this took exactly eight minutes. Okay. Woohoo! Oh, there you go. Buttery and crisp. Ooh, they are lovely. So as you can see, they're very, very golden brown. Lovely exterior. Great color. Okay, so at this point, we're done with the waffle iron, so we're going to turn it off and call that done. So there you have it. Let me see if I can get you a better close-up look. There we go. Okay, so there are the finished croffles. And you saw how easy that was. Only eight minutes in the waffle iron, and voila, these beauties are done. Okay. Ta-da! Those look so good. Really awesome. These are great treats. Now, let's see. Um, oh, Ginger Snap says, all things considered, you guys look remarkably cool. I'll take it. These cold drinks help. These, yeah, these cold drinks are helping. I'm going to need another one. Mmm. Mm. These are so good. Let me get a paper towel and wipe up my mess over here. I'm going to make another one of these drinks, and I'll show you how to do this over again. For those of you who missed this, we're going to let those cool down a little bit, and then we'll play with them a little bit more. Okay. So I don't have a clean glass, but we're just going to go for it anyway. I'm going to start with new ice. So what we do first is just fill the glass up with ice. And I'm just using my fingers for the ice today. If I was doing this for a room full of guests, I would use tongs or a scoop for the ice because, you know, that's how I am. But just for us, we can use our fingers. So the next thing, once we have our glass filled with ice, all we need to do is pour in some of this seltzer. Now I'm going to fill it not quite all the way to the top because I'm going to add some Trani. And today we have orange Trani and vanilla Trani. So we're going to do one ounce of each. So one ounce of vanilla. And then I'm going to add one ounce of orange. Voila. And then we get that lovely, lovely orange color going on. You're going to need that. I am. Okay, and then to top this off, this is where the cream in the vanilla orange cream comes in. We're just going to top this off with some spray whipped cream. Voila. And then for just a little extra pizzazz, I have some Jimmy's. And we're just going to use orange ones because that matches our drink. So I'm just going to sprinkle on a few... I want to get stuck in here. There we go. Okay, there we have it. You know, want some more of this too? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Voila, vanilla orange cream mocktail. How easy was that? I think that isn't that what Ina Garten always says. How easy was that? Yeah. Okay, so here is our vanilla cream mocktail. Mmm, so good. Okay, Dogfather is mentioning asking if we saw the bottles of Tirani that Jean-Marie did. And the answer is yes. Remember, I showed you the mm -hmm. picture. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Alton's wife's name is Jean. I call her Jean-Marie because I'm from France, and I like to say things in yeah, French. Yeah, you're from France. I'm from France. Yeah, right. Okay, so anyway. Like the Coneheads. Like the Coneheads. We're from France. <laughs> anyway, Alton's wife, Jean-Marie, took Tirani bottles and she stripped the labels off that they come with. And then she put custom labels on in this gorgeous oh. sort of calligraphy handwriting. So cool. They look so supremely cool. 
So she offered to do some for us, and I took her up on it. As soon as we move to our new house, we are going to get some of those bottles because they are supremely cool. They look so much more sophisticated, and it's you know, it's the same bottle. It's just been treated with this really wonderful custom calligraphy label, and they look very designer. You would never know it was just a Tarani bottle by the time that she got done with it. So yes, Alton, we did see those. They are gorgeous, and we can't have to, we can't wait to have some of those in our collection because they are super cool. Hey, Julie Gilpin's in the house. Great to see you, Julie. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Okay, I'm just looking at the chat really quick. Dogfather says, looks tasty. These, these are good, and it's yeah. not hard to do. So, you know, these the ingredients are all available at the grocery store, so it's not like you have to go uh, anywhere special to get this stuff to happen. Mm. Oh, my gosh, these drinks are so, so good. Okay, so what I want to do next is, oh, I, I want to say hi to Terry is in the house. Hi, Terry. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We've been making croffles. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what a croffle is, it is, what is it? A croissant made in a waffle iron. Okay, and, and these are them right here. Now, earlier we showed, uh, you may, used these as the shortcake in a strawberry shortcake. We used these as the biscuit for gravy and biscuits and these also make a nice vessel for little mini pizzas with pizza toppings whatever kind you like we tried red sauce pepperoni and mozzarella cheese that was really yummy but i want to taste one of these just plain yeah like we these are really 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 warm though so i'm going to taste one of these plain mm. Mm. can you hear the crunch i don't know if this microphone is picking up the crunch these are so supremely crunchy. The outside, it's just what you'd expect from a croissant. Really nice, that sort of shattery kind of crunch that you get from croissant dough. Really, really good. And then the inside has sort of that chewiness that you expect from a croissant. But as you can see, since they're pressed flat, they're not hollow inside. Now, what are you up to here? You're busy. I just had an You've idea. You've whipped out the peanut butter and jelly. Okay, so it's time for a peanut butter and jelly experiment. Philip is going to use peanut butter and jelly and tell us what you're doing. Taking this cold peanut butter out of the jar. Oh, the peanut butter is cold. That's right. Okay. It's still spreadable. So I'm just going to spread some peanut butter on top of this little guy. Dog father, so great to see you today. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. He's got to go back to work. Okay. Oh. Always a pleasure to have you here, Alton. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so. We've got a few more minutes left to go, and Philip is slathering one of the croffles with peanut butter and jelly. Now, you've got crunchy peanut butter. And seedless raspberry jam. Okay, seedless raspberry jam. That looks really good. Okay, so the croffles are super easy, and you can top them with just about anything. You can go like we did in a sweet direction. You can go in a savory direction. Mm -hmm. They work good as... You know, instead of uh, for an appetizer, you know, instead of using a piece of toasted bread, this works really good. These are, and they're yummy just plain by themselves. If you like croissants plain like I do, these are really good. Mmm. Okay. And they're so supremely crunchy. Peanut butter jelly. Okay, let's let everyone have a look at that. It's just peanut butter and jam. Really good. But oh, Julie Gilpin says Nutella. Nutella mm. would work really well for this, Julie. That's mm. a great idea. Mm. Oh. Terry says, they can't wait to see us cooking in our new kitchen. We can't wait to cook in our new kitchen. It is huge. It has lovely appliances. An island that's the size of a football field. <laughs> Excuse me. We don't need to go to Hawaii. We have an island in our kitchen, and it is huge. And also, the ceilings are 10 feet high in the whole house. So you can stand on the countertop and not touch the ceiling. Now, you may be saying, well, why on earth would you want anyone standing on your countertop? Well, if you've been to any of our parties, you might know that occasionally we hire a go-go dancer. Wink, wink. And so, you know, the go-go dancers can dance on top of the countertop. I think that sounds like a great idea, personally. 
That is so good. Oh, Julie says she wants mm -hmm. to try a croffle with lingonberry jam. Oh, yes. Bing, 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 bing. Lingonberry would be so, so delicious. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so these are really super delicious. These drinks were good. The croffles are good. This stuff was easy. Okay, so if you missed it, let's show one more time. This is the brand of frozen croissant dough that we got. This brand is called, let me see. It's called Pasquier. Brioche Pasquier French Family Baker. And we got this from a local market called Molly Stones. But these are widely available in lots of different markets. I couldn't find a safe yeah. Okay. Not at Safeway. So you may have to go to a more specialty grocery store. I'll never in market. Probably. So I would just Google this brand, Pas Pasquier. It's spelled P-A-S-Q-U-I-E-R. Look for these in the grocery store or any croissant dough that you can find. It's not always easy to find full-size croissant dough retail, but these mini ones, we ha didn't have too hard of a time procuring. Also, um, go to a local bakery or even the bakery in Safeway. If they sell croissants, they probably make them there. And if they do, then they have the dough. And they say, can I have a dough without being a bake? And why not? <laughs> Julie Gilpin is saying she's expecting a luau complete with a male hula dancer and palm trees. Hey, that sounds good to us. We're planning on having some palm trees in the backyard around our pool. And I'm actually, I'm, I've been eyeballing for a while now an artificial palm tree I want to put in the living room. So we're going to have palm trees inside and out once we get to Brentwood. Let's see. Barbecue Mike G wants to know, would Pillsbury dough work? Um, that was one of the recommendations um, when I was looking at problems online. Besides using regular croissant dough, was the Pillsbury crescent rolls. I'm also getting puff pastry dough and just sort of, you know, cutting them in triangles and rolling it up into a croissant form. That would also work. And then also, Mike, mm. we tried last week when we were experimenting with the croissant mm. dough. We also made some using biscuit dough, and those came out really, really good. In fact, I have one right here. This is one that was left over. We just put the biscuit dough in the waffle iron. And this is the result that we got. Biffles. So Philip named these biffles. This is just a uh, Grand's biscuit dough that we put in the waffle iron. And the cook time for this was different. This only took about five minutes to get completely done, whereas the mini croissants took eight minutes to fully cook. And we experimented with these for a while to get the cook times what we're suggesting. The, some of the things I saw online said, oh, just two to three minutes in the waffle iron. And it comes out golden brown. And it was... We did it three minutes the first time, and it was golden, but it was raw inside. Yeah, it was raw inside. And I don't know about you, but we're not really doing it so we can eat raw. So, uh, so Another, but the biscuits worked out pretty good. And I, Julie is commenting that the crescent rolls would not have the same flaky texture, no. and she's right about that. Yeah. It's going to be more similar to the uh, results we got here with the biscuit dough. So it doesn't have that uh, flaky, layery quality that puff pastry or croissant dough would have. It's denser, but it actually, the biscuits we did were really good, and they were nice vehicles for other things. We made little tiny mini pizzas with them, not unlike how we did with the croffles, and that was super easy, just biscuit dough out of a tube, and, you know, we're big fans of dough that's already prepared because it's such a big time saver. And, you know, what what people make their own croissant dough except professional mm -hmm. bakers? It's, it's such a laborious process to do all the laminating with the butter it's just not realistic for most people to yeah, take that kind it of, takes thing a lot of time it does mm. oh my gosh these orange vanilla mocktails are supremely supremely good okay so what toppings would you guys try on these croffles because i want to generate some ideas here so we can try some more of these as we formulate additional uses for these because i think these are great and they'd be good for a lot of things mm -hmm. i'm going to eat some more julie says walmart has bags of croissants you could speed up the process by smashing them in the iron oh. so she's talking about croissants that are already baked oh because you can get bags of croissants at Costco. I've oh. seen that before. I have no you idea try that. what kind of result that that would yield because they're already cooked. I think they, the, the, the dough on the outside of the croissant would break up because they're flaky. It would probably be a little messy. Well, it'd be worth an experiment yeah. just to see what happens. But 
She says she would put peaches with caramel sauce on these. Oh, oh my yes. God, that sounds so good, that Julie. Fine. Really, really good. Mm. I just saw another channel bake uh, a peach cake, a peach upside down cake oh, yeah. in the smoker. Oh my gosh, that was that from that was from Grill Mark Company channel. So Mark, if you're watching, your cake, your upside down peach cake in the smoker was awesome. It looked so so good. Mm. Oh, they can hear that crunch. These are so crunchy on the outside. Yeah. Really, really good. Without being like hard or dense. No, they're not. It's not so crispy, crunchy that it like hurts your gums and your tongue. The the dough is still very soft and pliable, but the outside, because of the nice browning from the waffle iron, it shatters and crunches up really, really, really well. Mmm. Julie's also suggesting because apple season is coming. Up. Oh, uh -huh. apples and cinnamon crumbles. Uh -huh. woo, woo. That sounds really good. Well, Julie's full of great ideas this afternoon. Thank you so much for sharing those. We really appreciate it. Okay. That looks really good. Oh my gosh. Apples and cinnamon crumbles. That sounds good. Okay. Cheers to you. Thanks for working so hard on the waffle iron this afternoon. Oh, that's easy. Mmm. Oh, also, Julia is suggesting for the luau at our island, pineapple and coconut. Woo woo. Ooh. Yay, that sounds great. I want to take the pineapple and get it we'll like grill. glazier. Yeah, we'll yeah. grill it. Grill it with brown sugar. Grill it. That grilled pineapple yeah. is so delicious. Julie loves to bake. Candy bacon. Thing. We're going to be doing a lot of baking coming up and the next few weeks because we have lots of baked treats that we're doing for Halloween. And we also have lots of baked treats, including a smattering of cookies for the winter holidays, like Christmas and New Year's, and whatever else you might happen to celebrate during the winter. So look for that because every Tuesday between now and the end of the year, we're going to be live at three o'clock at Pacific time, six o'clock Eastern time here in the USA. And we are going to be baking. You, you've you got a lot of cookie recipes planned for us coming up. I love making cookies. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Just as much as I love eating it. Almost as much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's winter, so it's okay to gain a little weight because yeah. it keeps you warm. Yeah. For hibernation. Terry wants to know, what is that on the cutting board that someone is working on in the pride colors? Oh, okay. Oh. Those are the napkins. Terry, these are paper napkins. Got them at Segway. These are dinner size napkins. We yeah. also have this pattern in cocktail size napkins. And like Philip said, they came from the grocery store uh, back. It was like in June during Pride Month. Yeah. These were one of the things, you know, how in the grocery store they have a little seasonal section and they had a Pride section. And these colorful napkins were part of that and collection. They also had, uh, small luncheon size paper plates. Which I think we have some of those. Yeah. We got, mm -hmm. yeah, Philip laid us out with everything. So we've got the cocktail oh, napkins. Good. The dinner napkins and some paper plates. So uh, Julie is also suggesting bananas and toasted macadamia nuts. Ooh. I think she's got it. We're just going to make a bunch of croffles, and then Julie can come over and put toppings on all of them, and then we'll have a big croffle party. Barbecued pulled pork. Barbecued pulled pork. Oh my gosh! Yes. Okay. We're gonna do a pulled pork. We have. Well, we did a pulled pork video quite a while ago where yeah. you. Did it in the oven. Yeah. That's We're going to have an outdoor kitchen when we move. So we'll be able to grill and barbecue. And uh, I've got our kettle grill that we found in the garage all cleaned up now. So we're going to definitely be using that. We can't use uh, anything at, with open flame in San Francisco because it's illegal for the most part. But where we're going, that's not the case. So we're definitely going to be doing some grilling as soon as we get there. The thing about San Francisco is um, you cannot, you no know, new buildings can have gas appliances everything has to be electric it's like ah, electric stuff well where we're going that's not true yeah, in brentwood not, you can no, still have a gas stove mm -hmm. and we're having a big beautiful five burner gas Hello. stove. we're going to be able to cook lots of things yeah. all at the same time okay so uh terry says i saw the paint nearby and thought it was a project okay i'm not sure what looks like paint here on the set because we don't have any paint in the kitchen right now we have tirani that's in colorful bottles vegetable oil, vegetable oil. We have, this actually is a painted prop cake, but we don't have any paint on the set today. Because we're cooking 
we'll, we will be doing some art projects coming up. Though. And then next week, we're going to be trying another low carb oh, the, appetizer, the, the, uh, salami cuts. the salami cuts. They're, what we do with this is um, it's a lower carb appetizer. And instead of having dough for the cup, we're using pieces of salami that are filled with cheese and then pepperoni and bacon and some other goodness to make these little tiny pizza cups. And so there's no dough, so then the carbs go right out the window. So we will show you that next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And we'll be right back here in the kitchen. Now, hopefully, it will it not be, be a so heat hot. wave anymore because we're going to have to have the oven on that day because the salami pizza cups have to be baked in the oven. So, uh, Oh, she's saying, yes, the prop cake. <laughs> Yeah, I did that in a video like three or four years ago. We've had that prop cake sitting around for quite a while now, and we get a lot of good use out of it because it looks pretty no matter no matter where you set it. And the frosting is made out of plaster, so it never melts. And keeping it out of the dome means it doesn't get dusty. Yeah, so I haven't had to worry about keeping it clean because it's always under a cake dome. There's a couple of bakeries I walk by, and they have these wedding cakes in the window, and they've been there for probably a couple of years, and they don't look very pretty anymore. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes that happens. So Julie's saying she's going to be on sabbatical in Sacramento. Oh. She's not far from us. Let us know when you're here so we can chat. All right. That would be so cool. All right. So we're just about out of time for today. So we really want to thank you for being with us today. We used mini croissanto that came from the freezer section of the grocery store. And we cooked it. This is the one ingredient. The cooking spray is the other. And we cooked them in the waffle iron. These mini croissants gave us this result, and it only took eight minutes at 350 degrees. And that's how you make a croffle. So if you try these at home, take a picture with your cell phone and put it on your Instagram and be sure and tag us in your post so we can check out what you made because we'd love to see how this recipe turned out at your house. Okay, so we're just about out of time for today. We really appreciate all of you joining us. From San Francisco, California, I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And this has been the Mitch and Philip Show. Woot woot. And today we made mini croffles mm. along with vanilla orange cream mocktails. Okay. And the, the ingredients for the mocktail are in the description below where you're watching this video. So you can copy and paste those into your recipe book. And then these are super easy. You just put them in the waffle iron at 350 for eight minutes and bada bing, your croissant dough is a croffle. All right. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you guys give this a try. And we'll see you back again next week and maybe sooner because we have some surprises. Uh, we're going to maybe do another unboxing video this weekend if our next batch of goodies arrives in time. We'll do a Saturday Night Live. All right. Thank you, everyone, again for joining us. We really appreciate having you here today. From San Francisco, California, I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And we will be back next week. See you then. Thanks for joining us. Ciao.